Hello there, faithful listener. You've tuned in to Season 7 of the Bible Explained Podcast. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee, because today we are going to be discussing the Book of Acts. Good morning, friends and faithful listeners, and welcome to the Bible Explained Podcast. Before we begin today, I need to apologize for something that I said on last Thursday's episode. I made a mistake. So (laughs) if you guys were listening in, I talked about how Paul was on a ship and he was about to be shipwrecked. And I mentioned that they were 90 feet away from the shoreline. But even as I was saying that, I was thinking that seems really, really close because my my driveway is like significantly longer than 90 feet. So later on, after the episode was already ready to be published, I researched it further and discovered that the ship was not 90 feet away from the shore. The water was 90 feet deep. (laughs) And so now I feel very, very stupid. And I want to apologize for that error that was made. However, I didn't feel stupid enough to go back in and change it because I discovered my problem before the episode even aired, but because it was already done and it was ready to go up and it was like airing the next morning, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to leave it and talk about my mistake next time we do an episode in the book of Acts. So I want to apologize for that. But faithful listeners, we are going to be discussing the shipwreck today and where Paul ended up going. And there is some debate about that, actually. So we'll get into that as well. It's going to be a really, really interesting episode today. A lot of research done. So I hope you guys are ready to read Acts 28, 1 through 10. I'll be reading at the WEB as always. When we had escaped, then they learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us uncommon kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us all because of the present rain and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped from the sea, yet justice has not allowed to live. However, he shook off the creature into the fire and wasn't harmed. But they expected that he would have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But when they watched for a long time and saw that nothing bad happened to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and courteously entertained us for three days. The father of Publius lay sick of fever and dysentery. Paul entered into him, prayed, and laying his hands on him, healed him. Then when this was done, the rest also who had diseases in the island came and were cured. They also honored us with many honors, and when we sailed, they put on board the things that we needed. This is one of my favorite stories in the entire book of Acts. This one and also the one where Paul almost got killed by the people through stoning. And then he gets up and walks right back into the city (laughs) of the people who tried to stone him. These two stories are my favorites in Acts because it shows the boldness of Paul. And I just aspire to have that level of boldness someday. But anyway... If you guys remember what we talked about last week, we talked about how Paul and 275 other people were on board this ship that was going to Rome. And many of the people on board this ship were actually prisoners that were headed to Rome to stand trial in front of Caesar. So this ship encounters this huge storm. And because this particular ship that they were on did not do well battling against the wind, they actually were forced to let the wind carry them wherever the wind wanted to take them. So they were at the mercy of the wind. Now, this was extremely scary for everybody on board, obviously, because they were scared that they were going to run aground or get into a terrible shipwreck or have the ship capsize or get flooded or something along those lines. But Paul told everybody, he prophesied to them that nobody on board the ship would die. Only the ship itself would not be spared. The ship would sink. Everybody else would be safe. And Paul prophesied 
correctly. So the ship first started out on the island of Crete. And so I have a map open right here. And this map shows where Crete is, which is right underneath Greece. And what ended up happening was the ship that Paul was on got thrown all the way across the Mediterranean Sea to the island of Malta. And Malta is right underneath Sicily, which is the, uh, the home of my ancestors. <laughs> anyway, Malta is all the way across the Mediterranean Sea. It's, it's a very long drive. If you want to drive from Crete to Malta, it says that it takes 36 hours. It's also 1,800 kilometers. If you want to fly from Crete to Malta, it will take about three hours and 15 minutes. That is how far away Malta is from Crete. It is on basically the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. So you can imagine how uncomfortable of a trip this was for everybody and how scary of a trip this was for everybody as well. But like I said, Paul prophesied correctly. Yes, the ship was lost, but everybody got to Malta safely. It says in verse one, when we had escaped, they learned that the island was called Malta. It says in verse two, the natives showed us uncommon kindness for they kindled a fire and received us all because of the present rain and because of the cold. So the islanders were uncommonly kind is what Luke says. And that's possibly because they saw what was going on. They saw the shipwreck happen. They saw these people who were in dire straits floating on rubbish from the ship. And because it was cold outside and they were in the water and possibly freezing, the natives were extremely kind to the people who were shipwrecked. It says that they kindled a fire and received us all. So then it says that Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire. If you guys have ever tried to start a fire in the rain, you know how difficult of a process that is. Wet wood does not want to start on fire. And since it makes it very clear that there was a rainstorm going on at this time, that means that a good portion of the wood would have been very wet. So this fire would have had to have constant sources of material to burn in order for the fire to keep going. So Paul was helping with this process. He was picking up sticks and throwing them into the fire. And that was because Paul had a servant heart. Every single time we see Paul, he's doing something to help other people. He never really thought very highly of himself. He was often regarded as very humble. So he was helping out with this menial task in order to keep this fire going so it doesn't go out with the rain and with the cold. So Paul gathers the bundle of sticks and it says that a viper came out because of the heat and fastened to his hand. Now, vipers are poisonous snakes. And as we know, snakes are cold blooded, so they desire warmth. And since this was a cold and rainy and wet day, obviously the snake would be attracted to warmth. And since Paul was throwing wood onto the fire, the snake was attracted to the fire. It came out to warm its blood up. And the snake fastens to Paul's hand. If you guys do anything with fires, you also know that snakes really like to hang around wood. <laughs> Actually, my, um, my aunt and uncle came up to visit us last year, and they live way down south where they have a lot of snakes. They came up and visited us and were actually wondering about our wood pile because we have a really significant pile of wood out front that we use to keep warm in the winter. And they asked me, they're like, do you have problems with snakes? because of all this wood that is out here. And I was like, well, yeah, we do have snakes actually, but nothing serious. We don't really have poisonous snakes around this area. They don't like the cold. So it's a well-known fact that snakes like to hang around wood. And if Paul, who potentially had bad eyesight, now that is not according to scripture, that is according to extra biblical sources, if Paul had bad eyesight, it's possible that he mistook the snake for a piece of wood. And the snake bit into Paul's hand. And it actually says that the, 
the creature fastened onto his hand and was like hanging off. (laughs) And so Paul's like looking at the snake and the natives are all looking at Paul. It says, when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped from the sea, yet justice has not allowed to live. So the natives are looking at Paul and they're like, yeah, this guy certainly is a murderer because, you know, all these people here are prisoners. This guy with the snake must have done something really bad and karma is coming for him. They say that justice was coming for him, actually, with the J capitalized. And that is because justice was most likely one of their gods who was like the god of karma. You know, you do something bad, karma is going to come to bite you. And they believed in this. So they assume that Paul had done something very, very bad because of this poisonous snake hanging off of his hand. However, Paul shook off the creature into the fire and wasn't harmed. (laughs) So Paul has like almost no reaction at all to the snake. And part of the reason he didn't have a reaction was because Paul had prophesied that everybody was going to be safe, okay, from the the shipwreck. And part of that prophecy was also a prophecy for Paul himself. Jesus had told Paul that he was going to go to Rome. He was going to go there. And Paul was not in Rome yet. Paul was on the island of Malta. So Paul knew that he was going to be in Rome. He had complete and total faith that that prophecy was real. So Paul is not phased by this poisonous snake. Instead, he shakes it off and it gets thrown into the fire. But one thing that's really interesting about this poisonous viper is that there are no poisonous vipers that we know of in Malta today. And this makes people question this entire story. Did this actually happen? Well, first and foremost... We do not know if there were poisonous vipers in Malta nearly 2,000 years ago, because the island of Malta has significantly changed since then. Malta now is pretty densely populated, whereas back in these days, it wouldn't have been as densely populated. So it could be that over time, venomous snakes just died off, became extinct in Malta. But it could also be that this particular snake traveled along in the ship like a stowaway snake (laughs) and also made it to land safely. And God used that snake to show the, the, the people of Malta a great miracle. But lastly, it could be that Paul and the other people were actually not on the island of Malta at all, but were on the island of Moliet. Okay, and I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not quite sure. But Moliet is an island right outside of Bosnia. And Moliet happens to be in the Adriatic Sea. And if you turn to Acts 27 and look at verse 27, it mentions right before the shipwreck happens that they were in the Adriatic Sea. It says, On the 14th night, when we are still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight, the sailors sensed that we are approaching land. And then that's when the shipwreck ended up happening. However... Back in the days of Luke and Paul, the Adriatic Sea extended down into the area south of Italy as well. That was all considered the Adriatic Sea. So there is some debate whether Paul landed on the island of Malta, which is south of Sicily, or he landed on the island of Moliet, which is just a little bit west of Bosnia. But if you think about it, If this were the island of Malta and 2000 years ago, they truly had no poisonous snakes at all. How much more of a miracle would this have been for this random poisonous snake that is nowhere in Malta to suddenly appear, attach itself to Paul's hand and Paul to shake it off as if there is no problem at all. Like this is a fantastic miracle. But this brings me to Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. And Jesus actually predicts people picking up poisonous snakes. Here's what it says. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. 
They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Jesus told his followers that they would be able to do amazing things in his name through the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, the disciples and the apostles did those amazing things. And Paul now is proving that prophecy of Jesus to be true. He literally picks up a poisonous snake with his hand and it does not harm him. Even the islanders expected Paul to fall down dead suddenly. But it says that when they watched for a long time and saw nothing bad happen to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> I find that story so hilarious. It just shows the uh, the fickleness of humans, you know, how they're like, oh, this guy is certainly a deadly murderer. And then 15 minutes later, when nothing bad happens to Paul, they're like, never mind, he's a god. <laughs> I just absolutely love that. But now Paul is doing some really good work here on this island of Malta. He begins to preach the good word and heal those who are sick. In the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and courteously entertained us for three days. So this very rich man, Publius, who is likely a Roman official of the island of Malta, takes in the prisoners and the Roman guards and the, the sailors and shows them a good time for three days, probably because of how cold and how sick and uncomfortable they were feeling. This was a, a wonderful time of rehabilitation for every single man that was aboard that ship. It says the father of Publius lay sick of fever and dysentery. If you guys don't know what dysentery is, it is a very uncomfortable gastrointestinal problem. It often involves bloody diarrhea. And so Publius's dad was extremely sick. So it says that Paul, without being asked at all, goes into Publius's father, prays for him, lays his hands on him, and heals him. And after all of this happens, the word gets spread. And everybody who had diseases on the island came and were cured. And it could be that this was a disease going around. Maybe there was something in the food that was causing dysentery. Maybe there was a parasite going around that was causing dysentery and people were very sick. But yet they come to Paul and Paul is healing them and spreading the good news as he heals them. Now, I did look up the word for heals in Greek. And the word is, if I can say it correctly, etherapianto. And that is actually where we get our word therapy in English is from this particular Greek word. So some people actually think that it was Luke doing some of the healings as well as Paul, because Luke, the author of Acts, is known to be a doctor. So it could have been that Luke was helping with the healings, helping with the therapies, helping everybody on the island get cured. But mainly, all of this shows that God used something so terrible, which was that storm on the sea, in order to bring Paul and Luke to the island of Malta, where people needed to hear the gospel, where people needed to be cured from whatever sickness was going around the island. God was using a bad situation for good so that the people of Malta could hear about the good news of Jesus. And that's what scripture says that God does. He takes bad situations and he works them for the good of his people. So it says to conclude in verse 10, the people of Malta honored us with many honors. And when we sailed, they put on board the things that we needed. So altogether, this missionary trip that Paul experienced turned out to be one of the better ones, actually. <laughs> Because Paul didn't get any terrible confrontations that we know of. He didn't have anything serious happen to him. He didn't get stoned. He didn't get beaten. And yes, of course, the snake thing was inconvenient, but Paul uh, shook it off into the fire. It's just kind of funny how this particular trip to Malta ended up being a very successful missionary journey 
for Paul and for Luke. And that was because God had guided that ship to Malta, specifically so that Paul could have one last missionary journey before he is imprisoned in Rome. Well, faithful listeners, this was a really fun episode for me to discuss. I hope you guys had fun as well listening to it. And if you did, let me know by writing a review and leaving the podcast some stars, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or really wherever you listen from. There's a lot of different areas where you can rate and review the podcast. And sometimes I like to read those ratings and reviews on the podcast as well. But faithful listeners, today I'm going to let you guys all go. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. Happy listening and God bless. <laughs>